Major Guevara, in your speech to the General Assembly day before yesterday, you accused the United States of helping Cuba's neighbors prepare new aggression against her. We, in turn, have often accused your government of abetting subversion in other Latin American countries. Do you see any way out of this situation, any way to improve relations? I think uh, with regards to solutions, there are solutions. And I think there is only one. We have said repeatedly to the government of the U.S. that we do not want anything but to forget us. That they, that they do not consider us even for good or evil. From New York City, Face the Nation, a spontaneous and unrehearsed news interview with Ernesto Che Guevara, Cuban Minister of Industry. Major Guevara will be questioned by CBS News United Nations correspondent Richard C. Hotlett, Ted Schultz of the Washington Bureau of the New York Times, and CBS News correspondent Paul Niven. Major Guevara, we have more questions about Cuba's relations with this country and with the communist countries and about your own internal situation. Major Guevara, you said a moment ago you would simply like us Americans to forget Cuba. Uh, your speech the other day suggested that you can't forget us. You, you consider us a hostile government 90 miles away. How can you expect us to forget you? I didn't say exactly that you that I expected to forget this. You ask a solution, and I said, what was this, that solution in the present moment? If it's possible or not, that's another question. Uh, Major Guevara, on several opportunities recently, Premier Fidel Castro has suggested in interviews with visiting newspaper men and on other occasions that a new effort be made to normalize relations between Cuba and the United States, particularly in the field of trade and exchanges. Uh, as an economist, do you feel yourself that a resumption of relations of this nature would be useful or welcome for Cuba? In other words, would you like to see the relations normalized? Not as an economist, because I have never considered myself an economist, but only an official of the Cuban government, as another Cuban. I think harmonious relations with the U.S. would be very good for us, from the economical point of view, more than in any other field, because all our industry has been, has been established by the U.S. and primary products and repair parts that we have to make with much difficulty or to bring from other areas could come directly. And besides, sugar, which traditionally we had the American market, is also uh, near. Major, uh, if my recollection is right, in 1960, you made several speeches, particularly one in March of 1960, saying that for Cuba to go on selling sugar to the United States was a form of colonialism to which Cuba was subjected. Have you changed your mind about this? Naturally, because those were different conditions. We sold sugar with specific conditions established by American buyers, which in turn dominated the internal market and production in Cuba. Now, if we would sell sugar to the U.S., it would be the Cuban government, the one who would sell it, and it would be a complete profit for our people. Dr. Guevara, Washington has said that there are two political conditions for the establishment of normal relations between the United States and Cuba. One is the abandonment of your military commitment to the Soviet Union. The other is the abandonment of the policy of exporting revolution to Latin America. Uh, do you see any chance of a change in either of these points? Absolutely. We don't put no condition of any kind to the U.S. We don't want it to change its system. We don't want this racial discrimination to cease in the U.S. We put no conditions to the establishment of relations, but we neither put conditions to... But my question was whether you would accept these conditions placed by the United States on the resumption of normal relations. 
We will not accept any conditions from the U.S. We will not accept conditions imposed by the U.S. to us. But when, in the matter of the of the uh, the missiles, the Russian missiles on Cuba, and the Cuban military relations with the Soviet Union, how can the United States be sure that Cuba is not a strategic threat once again? Would you accept uh, United Nations inspection or inspection by the Organization of American States if you do not permit American on-site inspection of Cuba? You talked about the Organization of American States. Yesterday, the, Colum uh, the day before yesterday, the Colombian delegate spoke about the orbit of the OAS. It is, in effect, an orbit which gyrates around the U.S. An inspection by such delegates would be an inspection by the U.S. You talk about that the United States don't feel secure, and we ask the U.S., do we ourselves feel secure that we have no missiles against Cuba? Then cannot we reach an harmonious solution? Because the, two, the countries are equal in the world. Let's inspect all bases, atomic bases of the U.S. And let's inspect also what we have in Cuba. And if uh, you want, let's liquidate all atomic bases in Cuba and the, in the U.S. And we are in complete agreement with that. Major Guevara, are you in fact trying to export your revolution? Are you every day shipping arms to other Latin American countries? Are you bringing revolutionaries from other countries to Cuba, training them, sending them home? I also had an opportunity to say at the assembly, and I can repeat it emphatically now, revolutions are not exportable. Revolutions are created by oppressive conditions which Latin American countries exercise against their peoples. And there comes rebellion. And afterwards, new Cubas will emerge. We are not the ones who create revolutions. It's the imperialist system and its allies, internal allies, the ones who create for revolution. But does not your attitude toward the present government of Venezuela, which is considered in many other countries leftist and progressive, suggest that you consider any government oppressive which is not communist? In absolute, no. What we consider is that the Venezuelan government is not a leftist government, has nothing of a leftist government, it's an oppressor, an oppressive government, is a murderer. He murders them in the, in the peasant fights in the region of Falcon, for example, where there are military advisors of the U.S. There is in Venezuela today, in spite of the American press uh, does not reveal it, is there any the gov Venezuelan government is not a leftist government. Is there any government in this hemisphere uh, which Cuba considers to be progressive? The word progressive is an ambiguous word. There is one government with which we keep diplomatic relations, the government of Mexico, with which we have good relations. Our systems are different. We respect their system. We are in a complete harmony up to the date, and I have the hope that it will continue like that. But if you ask me the uh, image of Latin America, there are some countries which oppress their peoples much more, and among the less least oppressive, among those which we could have perfectly normal relations without any difficulties, we could have Uruguay, Chile, maybe Costa Rica, but the U.S. do not permit us. But all these countries have broken diplomatic relations with Cuba. Don't you feel yourself isolated when you have no friend at all in this hemisphere? We have a lot of friends, but not among the governments. The friends are in the peoples. And in the last instance, the peoples will be the rulers of those states. Mara, you are one probably the outstanding exponent of guerrilla war in the Western Hemisphere, and you have said that the problems of revolution in Latin America will be settled by bullets rather than by ballots, and in general, the, your, your uh, dynamic approach to these uh, things seems to run much closer to the communist line, to the Chinese communist line. Also, um, Cuba has never signed the treaty 
banning nuclear weapons tests in the outer atmosphere, in the atmosphere, and, uh, and in, the, uh, in, in the sea. Uh, this is also uh, the Chinese communist position. Doesn't that put you really, in terms of your practical behavior and, and policy, on the Chinese side of the communist fence? Well, there are three or four questions in, in, verged in one. I'll try to answer one by one. In the first place, there is a statement I would like to deny. Or maybe the translation wasn't accurate. I heard you said you, I am the representative of guerrilla in this hemisphere. I am not the representative of guerrilla in this hemisphere. I would say that the representative would be Fidel Castro, which was the leader of our revolution and who had the most outstanding role in the direction and of the revolutionary struggle and directs the strategy of the Cuban government. As regards the two other specific questions, we do not have to participate in the controversy because they are very specific problems. The problem of a peaceful transition to socialism, we do not discuss it as a theoretical question. But in America, it is very difficult and it's near the impossible. That is why specifically in America we say that the road to the liberation of peoples, which is, will be the road of, to, of socialism, will go through bullets in almost all countries. And I can make a prophecy with tranquility that we will see it. With regards to the problem of the signing of the new test ban treaty, we welcomed that step as a measure which tended to prevent the uh, aggravation of tensions, but we pointed out very clearly that us, with a military American base in our territory where there could be any sort of weapons, where we can, where we have to endure every kind of provocations, we have to support, endure the flights over our territory, we cannot sign that treaty because it would be a treason to our people. That's independently to the fact that we welcome the treaty in its worldwide terms as beneficial to the world, but only a step. We cannot remain here. We must continue forward if we want to prevent a world. Dr. Guevara, you have protested against the presence of the American naval base at Guantanamo and the continued American reconnaissance over flights over Cuba. Will you take any military action, either against the base or the planes? We will, we had to explain at the assembly the other day that we do not boast. We know the power of the U.S. We do not fool ourselves about this power. We say that the U.S. government wants us to pay a very high price for this unstable peace we enjoy today. And the price we are in a position to pay is only, comes only to the frontiers of dignity, not beyond. If we had to kneel in order to live in peace, they will have to kill us before. If they do not want to go to that point, we will continue to living in the best way possible, that is, in this not peaceful coexistence that we have today with the U.S. Major, may I ask you what percentage of the people of Cuba support the revolution? Well, there is a joke which you made with you circulated. I don't know if you want to refer to the joke about the Castro brothers. We have ten seconds. In ten seconds? It's very difficult. 
in this moment we do not have elections, but the great majority of the Cuban people support this Thank government. You, I don't know. For being here to face the nation. Llegamos al final. Hoy tuvimos muchísimo material, mucha ida y vuelta. El caso de Laura Iglesias, una entrevista que estábamos trabajando. Nos pareció muy eh, importante sacarla cuanto antes, pero también eh, eh, pegado a lo que sucedió en el Encuentro Nacional de Mujeres en, en, en Rosario. Un encuentro al que saludamos y esperamos algún día poder incluso ir a, a, a trabajar cuando se realice en alguna parte de Argentina, sea en el Chaco, sea en cualquier parte. Pero por otro lado también la invitación cotidiana que hacíamos a continuar nuestro trabajo durante la semana. ¿eh? Podés vernos en las repeticiones ¿eh? que están saliendo ahí en... en en, lo, en los títulos del final de Cartago y también puedes encontrarnos en internet a través de las páginas de YouTube y de Twitter. Con esto nos despedimos hasta la semana que viene acá por Somos el Valle con más Cartago Televisión. Y en mi mente se relata tu belleza soberana cuando voy por tu camino la soledad me acompaña me presto...